So welcome back guys to another video. And if you guys have been following my channel a while or follow me on social media, you guys know I absolutely love the Dragon Quest series. It was my first entry to the JRPG genre. I bought the original Dragon Warrior on the NES. It was a blind yard sell buy when I was seven years old, many, many moons ago, and I'm so glad I got it. And you know, it's kind of sad because the Dragon Quest series over the years wasn't really as popular in the Western market compared to the conglomerate that is Final Fantasy, which is a really big shame. But over the years, it has been getting more and more popular, and we've gotten some great spin-offs like Dragon Quest Heroes, the Dynasty Warriors inspired game. Also, for all you Minecraft fans, definitely check out Dragon Quest Builders. So that gave me the idea. Today, I'm gonna to be focusing on some Dragon Quest spin-offs that I highly recommend you guys check out. Now the first one I want to talk about, it was actually released on the Nintendo Wii. It was around the launch of the Wii and a lot of people kind of just look past it. But that is Dragon Quest Swords. Now Dragon Quest Swords, you're following a, a young hero who is following the footsteps of his father. And his father in the past defeated this evil, evil entity called the Deathbringer. And you're trying to follow in his footsteps and find your own way. And you find out the prince is missing his mother, the queen. And that's where the whole game game starts to kind of start out. Now this is released on the Wii so it is a motion controlled game. It is basically a sword fighting simulator but it's also a really fantastic first person JRPG. It's kind of simplistic as well so if you are just now getting into JRPGs or maybe you're trying to get someone into the genre and you want them to feel really engaged in the game this is a game I really highly recommend and the best thing is it's actually pretty cheap. The last time I checked it was around six dollars at GameStop. If you guys can find a copy, I know GameStops are starting to uh, you know dwindle their Wii collection out of the retail stores. Definitely pick it up. Now for all you indie gamers out there who love your roguelikes like Binding of Isaac and uh, Diablo fans, I have a roguelike you guys definitely need to check out and that is Tornico The Last Hope. Now this was a Dragon Warrior game released on the PlayStation 1 and at the time it didn't get a lot of praise from reviewers. A lot of it I think is because it was based off of Dragon Quest V which was only released in the Super Famicom at that time. And you're following the events after the game and Tornico finds this chest full of uh, riches and all these great things he opens it up and it goes and just spreads out through town and causes a bunch of havoc and the king sends him to go into the dungeons and destroy all these monsters and that's where the roguelike comes in every dungeon you go into is completely random adding tons and tons of replayability and you know when you first look at it you're going to think that hey this is just a zelda clone or a diablo clone but it definitely has some quirks and kinks that make it its own and I, I'm telling you, I really wish this game would be released on PSN, especially with Dragon Quest becoming more popular. I would love to see a digital or maybe an HD upscaled version of this game. I highly recommend it. Now, I have to say, my favorite thing about Dragon Quest, I absolutely love the, I guess it's the official mascot of Dragon Quest, and that's Slimes. I, I love these little creatures, and they actually made a couple of games based off of this little creature. One I definitely want to note, and I feel like terribly underrated, is Dragon Quest Rocket Slime. Now, when this game came out, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I just saw the cover, and I was like, I have to have this. But this is actually an action RPG, top-down, very Zelda-like, but also has a mechanic that's just so fun. It's actually got tank combat in it. Um, the tank combat's made for uh, all the boss battles, and also you can do uh, four-player matches uh, via Wi-Fi, and I really love what they did with this game. Now, the plot of the game follows a lot of the Dragon Quest monsters. You're playing as a little slime trying to save the kingdom from this evil organization called Plop. And you're using the monsters and throwing them into different puzzles to, you know, unlock different parts of this game. And then the cool thing about the tank controls is is using a dual screen. So the top screen is going to be your tank battle while the bottom you're actually controlling the little slime in real time. 
the, you know, maybe throw certain ammunition and cannons and whatnot. I, I feel like this game's really underrated, and I, I have heard they've came out with sequels in Japan. Unfortunately, I don't think any of it's came out to the West, which is a really, really big shame. But if you want to play a game on the original DS, is really underrated, Rocket Slime. Rocket Slime all the way. Now, for all you Pokemon fans out there, I highly recommend Dragon Warrior Monsters on the Game Boy Color. Now, from first glance, this looks like a cut and dry clone of the Pokemon series. And to tell you the truth, it's got some similarities, but it's got enough that makes it its own game. In Dragon Warrior Monsters, you're following the hero Terry, who witnessed his sister being kidnapped by some various monsters, and he decides to join a monster tournament. And the winner of this tournament gets to have any wish they desire. Of course, that's to bring back his sister. So you're going to be going through this game capturing different sorts of monsters, and you can actually breed monsters, which Pokemon Blue and Red at the time wasn't even tapping into that yet. You can do that and get your own monsters. You battle bosses, you bring the bosses, they join your party. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it for the Pokemon fans and it became so popular that there's more Dragon Warrior monster games out there and it even went on to do the Dragon Quest Joker games, which those are also really awesome on the Nintendo DS. So anyway guys, that is some of my favorite Dragon Quest spin-off games. I highly recommend you guys check these out and you know, whenever there's anything Dragon Quest coming out, I always try to get it just because the more Dragon Quest stuff we get, the more Square Enix knows that we really wanna see more of this series. You know, we still haven't gotten a Western release of Dragon Quest X, the MMO that was released on the Wii. We also are just really, really hoping and waiting for Dragon Quest XI to come to the Western market for the 3DS and the PlayStation 4. What does the future hold? I don't know, but whatever comes out, I'm really excited and I want to see more of this series. And with that being said, leave a comment below, guys. Tell me some of your favorite Dragon Quest games, some of your favorite Dragon Quest spinoff games. I love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, happy gaming. Can't get enough of Excess Gaming Podcast? Be sure to check out our audio podcast on podomatic.com. You can also subscribe to us on iTunes. And if you have a YouTube channel or podcast you'd like to share, be sure to check us out on Facebook on our group page and join the community. As always, guys, thank you so much for all the support and happy gaming.